Hello there, many thanks for joining us on our Monday Business News Report. It's now time to bring you the feature on the show today. Now, the war in Ukraine is expected to further lower global light due to vehicle production through this year and even next year by millions of units, according to S&P Global Mobility. Now, the automotive research firm has also downgraded this year's and next year's global light vehicle production forecast by 2.6 million units for both years to 81.6 million for 2022 and 88.5 million units for 2023. Now, the conflict has caused logistical and supply chain problems as well as part shortages of critical vehicle components. The problem also adds to an already strained supply chain due to the coronavirus pandemic and an ongoing shortage of semiconductor chips. European auto production is expected to also take the biggest hit. According to S&P, and the firm also cut 1.7 million units from its forecast for Europe, including just under 1 million units from lost demand in Russia and Ukraine. Now, the rest of the cuts are from part shortages involving chips and wiring harnesses caused by the war. Russia's invasion into Ukraine continues to shake up the global market for nickel, just as the metal gains important as an ingredient in electric car batteries. Raising fears that high prices could also slow the transition away from fossil fuel. Now, for Nigeria, the impact of this ongoing crisis weighs heavy on the affordability and availability of vehicles from the perspective of car financing. Well, joining me now in our Lagos studio to discuss this and much more, I have Michael Fadi Yibi, the Senior Vice President of West Africa, AutoCheck Africa. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast Show this Thank morning. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Let's start our conversation really with the impact of the Russia-Ukraine crisis yeah. now. This has had a devastating effect on the global economy, to say the least. Now, we had already had the situation of shortages of semiconductor chips. Exactly. And now this is a higher level of pressure in terms of vehicle production. We expect the European market to also have the bigger hit, especially as we're looking at this global transition to electric vehicles. Now, in terms of Africa's auto industry within the West African space where you play big, mm -hmm. let's also look at the impact would have for West Africa? Yes, uh, it's very interesting what you said, right? Mm. With the pandemic that we had, we had the semiconductor issues, we had supply chain issues, and it's almost like we were looking to the light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel really. for things to mm. sort of start quite getting back to normal. And then we now have this, right, the war. So it just means it's starting to extend even the issues that we've had previously. So during the pandemic, uh, new car prices went up by about 12%. Used car prices went up about 41%. And so you can imagine the impact that then has on us in West Africa, where we have a lot of foreign used cars coming into the country. Mm. So what that means is that the used car prices that we were dealing with, the increase that we we're dealing with, would not be going away for right. a while, right? And so the implication that has for us here in West Africa from a purchasing power ability means that there's going to be further increase in the prices of vehicles that are coming in. And then we also have our exchange rates, right? That mm. then uh, layers on. So unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be in this for a while. And the volatility within the foreign exchange market is also one of exactly. the biggest pressures that we're having yes. today because we largely have to import these vehicles. Now, yes. in terms of why car finance and culture is yet to take a flight here in Nigeria, why do you think we have this major challenge? Yes, you've made mention of the affordability versus uh -huh. availability index here and some of the stifling issues, but it just seems like a vehicle is a necessity at this point in it time, is an but why is it difficult? Absolute necessity. In to fact, have it? when you think of vehicles and you think of transportation, right, mm. it is absolutely important for every single person. So it affects not just the consumer, it affects SMEs, it affects productivity, what we call transportation poverty. So, in terms of financing, the one reason why, or there are many reasons actually, mm. why um, it has not been as pervasive, one is education. People don't understand it. It's not, it has not become a way of life. Mm. And so that's one of the things that we are focusing on, helping people to understand that you don't have to save up all your funds to be able to afford a vehicle. But by having access to vehicle financing and having interest rates, uh, having, uh, sorry, excuse me, access to vehicle financing, you can actually afford 
uh, your vehicle. Unfortunately, some people look at financing as debt, as mm. oh my the god, we don't do we, people. yeah, <laughs> we don't do that in my family, you know, <laughs> that type of thing, right? But there's really nothing wrong with it. Mm. That's actually how we should live, such that it allows you to have a good, you know, a good way of life, mm. where you can then spread your payments over time. You have a mortgage, you have car financing. That should be our normal, right? So how it's do we just now trying begin to change, to change that. this culture and make it a walk development where people feel comfortable making these staggered payments and have a uh -huh. stronger commitment to ensuring that their payments are also made on time. Yeah, so I think one, it's education. I think it's one of the things we are doing at AutoCheck where we're bringing all the different stakeholders mm. together in the ecosystem. Uh, finance partners, bringing customers, dealers, even helping the dealer to understand that once a customer comes into your location, you can offer them financing okay. and also helping them to do it in such a way that it's a lot easier to do. So if you can come on the website, apply for your loan, and then you get your uh, vehicle, right? Okay, Make the process very easy. For the lack of time, because I've sure. been told we're wrapping up now oh, wow. despite mm -hmm. nigeria being one of the most populous uh countries in africa we're seeing uh, passenger vehicle sales really low here mm -hmm. compared to south africa egypt uh morocco but in terms of the future of car financing in nigeria and also within the west african region how do you see us also playing big in terms of this transition do you think we're going to see more of a transition shift into gas powered vehicles or you think it's going to be electric vehicles coming to bear much more aggressively so I think we'll be moving into electric vehicles, okay. right? Uh, like we talked about earlier, we have vehicles coming in from the U.S., being imported into this country. And so as that starts to grow, even in Europe, in the U.S. as well, then we start to get that here. Of course, one of the key things for us would also be solving our electricity Issues. problems to ensure <laughs> that uh, we can actually power those vehicles. Mm. But I think, I mean, the time is, it's coming. It's the coming faster. The future of kind of financing means we're increasing credit penetration okay and it's going to become the new normal thank you so much for your time on the breakfast show this morning it's been a pleasure speaking with you Mayoko Fadeyibi we really hope that car financing so takes a bigger penetration and we keep our fingers crossed to see how this whole Russia Ukraine crisis continues to play out because this is weighing heavy on the mm -hmm. car production process yeah. and then we need cars more affordable for Nigerians for everybody thank you so much <laughs> thank you